Okay, I'll put the recorder on so that we can preserve this for others. And so, if more come in, I'll just go through a quick how do you use the mic thing. But I think the three of us know pretty well what to do. And I'll turn off my mic and let you kind of go on that. Ideas about how to find jobs, things the school districts might be looking for, whether we should be prepared for demos. And, um, that you might have on that going for an interview. And um, I'll pop in eventually if there are any points you missed. And maybe Paolo can ask too. And Paolo, for you and I, there's a raise your hand icon. So that if you want to interject with a question, you can do that. And I'll try to look at the chat too in case other people come in. Um, and if it gets too noisy, you have to use the mics. But so far, I think it's just a small audience, but we'll tape it anyway. So I'm going to turn my mic off and let you give us the lowdown, Christian. And thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yes, yeah, so I guess um, since it's just the three of us, if anyone has any questions, just you know, go right ahead and pop in and, and just feel free to interrupt and uh, ask any questions. But yeah, just a, a quick background. I mean, I was. Um, an engineer, a civil engineer for 13 years, and um, just left this summer uh, in August to take my teaching position at Lafayette High School. So I teach physics there, and I'm really excited that next year I'm going to be starting up the Project Lisa Way program, um, which is an engineering program. So this coming school year I'll be teaching both um, physics and engineering. Did oh, you have a question? Yeah, I yeah. forgot. Um, if I open up another page and kind of take a few notes while you're talking so that we can have a little script, is that okay with you? Absolutely. Okay, so don't get too distracted. I'll just take that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so Dr. O'Connor had asked me to just kind of come, come in and, and kind of give some strategies as to what I use for my job hunting. Um, I'm by no means an expert, but um, I did get a job this year, so I guess I did something right. So I'll just kind of share with you what I did, and hopefully it will help somebody out. Um, I guess the first thing that I did was I, I really had to take a hard look at my resume. The resume that I had, um, you know, it looked pretty good if I was going to go get another engineering job, but to pass it off in front of people who were educators, um, it didn't have any education stuff on there. So I really tried to... Um, look at what I had been doing and how I could spin it into an educational um, characteristic. So, I, like I said, I was an engineer, and one of the things that I did was um, a lot of my projects were in public work. So I would have to go to talk to the public, and I would have to tell them, okay, we're going to be tearing up your street, we're going to be closing down the streets, we're going to be doing this project, the reason for this project is because of blah, 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 and, and kind of educate them. At, to what was going to be happening in their neighborhood. So I kind of took my job, which was really technical, and I said, you know, this is what I did. I did some technical stuff, and I did some public education. Um, and then I was a supervisor of other engineers. So, I mean, really, if you think about it, as a supervisor, you're teaching and you're mentoring and you're helping um, people to develop their skills. So I, I played that up about what I did as a, as a supervisor to make sure that school districts could see that I wasn't just some technical person coming in. Like, I did have some skills that crossed over really well with teaching. So that was kind of what I did. Um, and I guess the two things that I really wanted my resume to show was that I was really dedicated to education. This is something I absolutely wanted to do. Um, and also that I was a professional. Like, I didn't want districts to think that I was a really bad engineer, and I decided, like, I got to get out of this and I got to find some other career. I wanted them to know that I was successful and that I was leaving a successful career behind because I was so passionate about teaching. So those are the two kinds of things that I, I try to make my, my resume show. So anytime, like, I had any awards or anything like that, I made sure to put that on the resume. Um, even though maybe it didn't relate directly to teaching, I wanted them to see that, look, I was good at what I did, and I was consider a professional. So um, so I guess once I had my resume together, I um, needed to start 
finding where to send it. So um, what I did was I, I kind of figured that I was comfortable driving about an hour every day to get to, to, um, to work. So I looked at where are all the school districts kind of within that range. Um, I looked at my, my county, my county website and I was able to get a listing of all the, um, school districts in the county. So I found all of those. And then where I live is kind of on the border of like three counties. So I looked in those county websites too. And I found a list of all the school districts. So I had all these school districts together. I figured out which ones, you know, were within my, my range that I would drive. And I kind of came up with a big list there. And then the next thing I did was, um, thanks to um, Dr. O'Connor, I knew about Ego, um, e -I -I -G -O com. And if you're not familiar with it, it's, um, it's a bookmarking website. So um, I set up, um, I think it's called a list. I set up a list there, and I made it like my, my uh, school district list. And I went to all these different school districts. So like, okay, I decided I was going to, um, Lafayette was within my range. So I went, I found the Lafayette school district homepage and I found where they listed job openings. And once I found their website that listed job openings, I grabbed that website and I threw it into Digo. And then I repeated it about like 60 times <laughs> with all the other school districts. So it was great because what I would do is like every day, um, I would come home and I would just open up Digo and I would just go like click, click, click down the list to see if any school districts had popped up any new um, job openings. So it was great because I just had Digo open and it was just a list of like a hyperlink of all of these different school districts and I could just click, you know, Lafayette, okay, nothing, Baldwinsville, okay, nothing, Syracuse City School District, nothing, and I could just keep going. Um, I also found the website for the newspaper where they listed their classified ads. Um, and I also threw BOCES in there. Um, I think those were the only things I had on my list. So um, the other thing that was great was that, um, like I said, I'm in the Syracuse area. And in our region, I'll send you to the MAT program. There were four of us that lived, like, right in Syracuse area. So we kind of um, helped each other out. Like, my friend Tammy had found that she was actually wanting to know about Lafayette before I saw it. So she emailed me right away or texted me. was like, Lafayette has a job. Go apply there. Um, when I saw stuff um, for, for languages, because one of the other teachers was uh, a language teacher, I would send it to her. Hey, did you see this? This is here. So it was really great because, like, the four of us kind of worked together to make sure we had all seen um, job openings in our content area. So um, I guess, you know, if you've got any, any other people in the MAT program, that are like local within your um, your area, maybe you guys can can help each other out. Just be another set of eyes and ears to hear about um, just the job openings. Um, and then the uh, once I had um, found all these districts, and I did get some some hits, you know, saw that there were some job openings. Um, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with these applications, but they should be quite involved. Um, I mean, some of these applications are like four or five pages, um, have essays in them. So, um, you know, if you're, if there's like a particular school district that you really want to work for, even if they don't have a job opening, you might want to just pull out their um, application and start filling it out. Um, because it's like, you know, if you sit down at night at five o'clock and you see a job just open up, you're going to want to jump on that as soon as possible. And it takes a couple hours to get the application together to, to fill out the form that they want the way they want to fill out and get their essay questions together. So, um, you know, like I said, if there's like a particular district that you really want, maybe you should just go ahead and take some time and fill out their, their application form. Um, and then um, what I did was I, if it was possible, I hand-delivered the package to um, the district. Um, brought it to the superintendent's office, you know, dressed up, nice interview clothes, and um, brought it in a package and just said, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the, the business teaching position. Um, if you have any questions, you know, just my contact information inside. And I just felt that it made a little bit more impression to me with my face showing up 
and bring the package. Um, a lot of people will tell you not to put other stuff in there, but um, I found that a couple districts did not know what the transitional D certificate was. And if you haven't looked at the brochure that the college has put out about the transitional D certificate, um, really you need to open it up with Santa Hackett. It like, looks like, why would you not want to hire someone who has a transitional D certificate? So um, I got a couple extra copies. I think you can also print them off the internet with a nice color paper, uh, or rather colored, colored print and put those in there too. So I would definitely suggest um, adding that in there if at all possible. Um, and then I used to the interview. Um, you know, the first interview that I went to, I kind of looked back on it and it was just so horrible. <laughs> I just did so badly on it. And I looked back on it and I, and I really thought about, wow, how did I do so badly on this? Um, I really went in there with like this long attitude. I kind of went in there I don't want to say apologizing, but almost like making excuses to why I didn't have student teaching experience and um, why I didn't have an initial certificate. Um, and I, I'm really, you know, kind of, it's kind of, I'm going to say I'm kind of mad at myself, but I love where I work, so I guess it's all just down in the end. But um, I mean, you have to go in there and present yourself and say, you know, be confident and be like, you know, yes, I'm not the traditional first year teacher, I'm not 21 years old, I didn't, you know, didn't have a student teaching experience, but I'm a professional, and I have all of this professional job experience, and let me tell you why you want to hire me. Um, schools right now are so focused on 21st century learning and preparing students for life beyond graduation and life beyond college graduation. You know, you can go in there and you can talk to your students um, about what it's really like in the real world. They, they, they really listen and, and they need that. And, and districts are dying to have people in their buildings that have real world experience. Um, so I know, uh, I know I'm really valued actually at my district because of my professional experience. And um, districts are really looking for this. So I think we have to really not be shy about the fact that, you know, this is your second and maybe third <laughs> career um, and really emphasize that. Um, the kind of questions that I got. I had three different interviews, and they were really all over the place. So one interview that I bombed, um, she said, I was looking back at it now, I'm not quite sure why they called me for an interview, because they were clearly looking for a teacher with a lot of experience. So all of her questions were about um, why, um, oh, sorry, hold on a second, um, why did, um, why did, um, Tell me about a, a lesson that you taught, or um, tell me about um, a time when when things went wrong and how did you pull it back together. Um, so I had to basically instead say, well, if that happened to you, here's what I would have done. Um, um, that's that was my answer to the question. The other interviews that I went on were, um, I guess they're also the same girl type question, um, asking how I would handle the different situation. I think. Um, what the school district is really looking for is showing that you have a plan in place to prevent those situations from happening. Like, I tried to talk about, well, if that situation were to happen in my classroom, here's what I would do. But on the other hand, here's what I would have done to have even prevented that from happening. You know, I would have um, had clear expectations. The teachers have had clear expectations of the behavior and they make for the behavior choices here with their consequences. Um, I would be contacting parents at the beginning of the year just to welcome, letting them know that I can have an open door policy with parents. Um, and just kind of telling them all the things that I would do to establish a good relationship with students and parents at the beginning of the year so hopefully all these problems wouldn't arise um, throughout the year. Um, so I think there's an L to the interview. Um, Oh, and I did talk to my um, my science department about um, why did you guys choose me? You know, so I was thinking about this, this webinar, um, and they said that there were there were two things that really came to mind. Um, actually, three. They said one was that they could tell I was determined and that I really really wanted to be a teacher. So they said that that really came out in the interview that I was really um, dedicated and determined. Um, the other thing was that they had. A lot of turnover at the school 
for this particular position. It's funny, I go through things and I find, I find stuff, I'm like, I think it's the seven business teachers in the room. <laughs> it's just so many. So they kind of just got the feeling that I was going to be a person who didn't say that. Um, I was at my last job for 13 years, so maybe they kind of saw that and, and that gave them an idea of my, my loyalty of staying in this place. Um, and then I guess the other thing was that the earth science teacher has this thing in an interview where she likes to ask a multi-part question and see if the candidate can answer all the questions. Um, and she said that I was the only one who did to do that. So she asked me like a three-part question and I answered all three parts of it. And apparently I was the one who was able to multitask the question. So I was the one who made it to her little streaming class up there. Um, so I guess to that point, you know, just pay attention to what the question is. And um, if you're not sure if you answered it, it's always okay to say, you know, did I answer your question? Does that, does that um, satisfy what you're trying to do? Look for it. And you can always have a dialogue with, uh, with people in the interview. So, um, I don't know. I, if anyone has any other questions, or Dr. O'Connor, if you had anything else you wanted to ask me, but that's kind of my story as to how I, I got there. So, hopefully it was helpful. So, I'll ask Paolo in a minute, but I'm just wondering um, you did bring up the 21st century skills, and they appreciated. Um, your, you know, your experience and life experience, I think that's really important. That's what we really have to remember. But did they ask, um, even among your different interviews, were there any particular questions that the district team to have key in their mind about education or testing that you think might come up for our students when we go for interviews? Um, I think, like I said, there are mostly behavioral questions, so hold on, I kind of missed here a couple of them. Um, give, me, give me a thumbnail sketch of yourself. Tell us about a time you were communicated with the class or what you would have, had, what you would have done differently. Um, a parent calls and wants the child's grade to be changed, what do you do? Um, Tell us about your career as a learner and what you had difficulty with. Um, how familiar are you with the standards? So those, are, those are some of the questions I had. Um, I was never asked to demo a lesson. Um, let's see. Do many, um, just from your talk to other teachers, do you find do many have to demo lessons or is that not too often required. Um, I haven't heard of that being asked, but it would probably be a good idea as you're preparing for the interview to maybe have have a lesson or two kind of in your head as to what you're going to do, or maybe if you have a lesson plan to possibly, possibly bring it with you. you. Um, because because I, 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 I just don't think, think it would be a bad idea to have, have that with you. you. Okay, I think that'll be it on my questions. I'm going to keep on typing, and for some reason I can't always click it to that box too well. So, so if you don't mind, can Paolo ask you some questions, questions too? Do you, do you, do you have, have some more? Okay. 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 Okay.
I think you have to turn the talk button on. I can't see you. No, what was said, uh, uh, it's very good because it, it, it gives you very good ideas on how to relax the CD, which uh, really helps, of course, everything that has to do with preaching, but also we will invite the CD a part of it, it's dedicating it to my technological experiences. I think this is, uh, should help a lot. That's great. Um, one thing I, I, I forgot, forgot I wanted to mention was um, I picked up this tip somewhere a while, a while ago about how to prepare, prepare for an interview. I don't I'd always thought that you could just kind of walk in and the interview, they ask questions, questions and you answer them. them. Um, um, you need to prepare, prepare for it. it. Um, um, the tip that I picked up was to take a piece of paper and fold it in half vertically so you have two columns. And then in the left hand side, write like characteristics that you think the school district might be looking for. Um, and then underneath that, you need to leave like three or four spaces between each one. one. And then, and then underneath, underneath, underneath that, that, write any strengths that you have, you have that you want to make sure um, you bring, bring out in the interview. interview. Like if you're dedicated, dedicated if you're professional, if you're passionate, um, um, if those are the strengths that you want them to know about, write those down too. And then, and then on the right hand side of the paper, give examples. Um, and, and stories and anecdotes, and anecdotes so that you, that you can show them how you are. Because you can't just go into an interview and say, you know, I'm a professional, I really love this job, I'm dedicated, I'm going to work hard. you got to back it up with stories and examples. So if you can take a couple minutes and sit down and think about your strengths and what you want to present, and then give some backup for how you're going to tell them that you know, give examples and prove to them that you are all those things. Um, um, that can be really, really, really helpful, helpful to kind of get your, get your brain thinking, thinking that way, way. Um, um, as to how you really want to put your best foot forward. forward. So I, I just remembered I wanted to share that little, little tip I had learned somewhere. somewhere. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
Palo Vista website is something that I put together over a little bit of time. And I'll be sending out the link. Can you see at the bottom? It's a Google site that was actually first called MAT Assignments. And you have to know that link. You can't search for it. So I'll be sending the link out to you and others that might be interested. And this is what the site looks like. I didn't want to try to go to it now because um, sometimes you can't really do the webinar too well. So I just, I just took some screen captures. So when you come into the site, you'll see, let me put my little pointer back on. Um, you'll see that on the sidebar here, you can click those links. There's also a front page that has links in it. And I put more on. So they can bring you to the same page. Remember Kristen said that there's that transitional deep brochure? Okay, that's here too. So I tried to find everything that people might find useful in this one site. So I'll ask you to kind of look at that. Um, but some of what's here, I just took some more screen captures. You know Kristen was saying? I didn't even think of that. Where she went to the school districts and found out um, if they had online applications. So what you want to do is you can parent to the school district. And I'll go through these in order, but they might be a little different than Kristen's lecture is. You want to go and find out about the particular school district. And so I put a link here. And if you go down to these links, you'll see something like this. Um, have you ever seen this link to the school report cards at all? Yes, I've seen this uh, before. Okay, and it's a good piece of homework to do before you start. So if you had clicked the link from my other slide up here, you would then get down to the school report card, which is this one. But you can always search for two. You'll see that they're listed by years. And it's good advice. Kind of as kind Kristen was saying, saying, before you, you visit a school, school do, your do your research. You know, you know and I'll and show I'll you some more examples. examples. But go, go into the school statistics, statistics and, and find, find out, out how, they're how they're doing with test testing. I'll, I'll, I'll learn, learn something, something about, about the background, background of the school. Of school. And I'll show and you some pictures of culture. Um, um, and. and you want, you to, remember want to remember that what that you're, what learning you're learning is research-based research -based best practice. practice. You're learning, you're learning 21st, 21st century, century skills. skills. Um, um, what, you what you want to remember, to remember is that, that sometimes, sometimes when you go to schools to do schools observations, observations, they can be they can a little bit negative, negative about, about higher ed. ed. You know, they're, you know, they're they under a lot of pressure right now, and they don't want to... You know, they're, they're under yeah, testing yeah, pressure and all that, but, but what I would recommend, recommend is that when you go to a school district, know what know their, their issues, issues are up here. here. Find, Find out if they have any issues. issues. But, but when you when come, come into, into visiting them, them I think just, just like Kristen like said, to have that little checklist, I might write down areas that need improvement, but I would be in with some solutions in case they ask. I wouldn't come in and just point out negatives about the school. Uh, that's just my advice. Um, also, be very careful with test fashion. There's a lot of ugly stuff going on right now about the reform movement. Um, I would just suggest you stay neutral. You know, one way or another, you're on the wrong side. And, um, just emphasize that you've been really working on how to get students ready for tests and for good teaching. So I wouldn't get into negatives. Um, but what, what, just some examples of the things that you might look for in your research before you go to the school. Again, drilling down from that school report card, you'll find a lot about the demographics of the school. Um, I went to Schenectady. As you know, that's in our region, so I simply went there and pulled some of its demographics. They're pages and pages and pages. Um, I also, for instance, looked at how connected these stacks up against other public schools. 
and they often have a similar school. They don't necessarily compare one an urban school and suburban school. They will um, compare similar socioeconomic groups. You know, look up, find out what the graduation rate is. Um, be, be prepared. Have these in your back pocket. And what, what this is a little bit little tiny, tiny, but all of you should go in and double check what that school is doing on your content area test. Um, I have to have showed you here the page each for the region, but you can also find the middle school test. All of this is public record now, so know what your school is doing. And I think as Christian said too. Uh, know, know about, about the school, school. You know, be informed, be informed. Um, um, but like, try to try understand, understand what some what of their issues are here. I'm seeing that Schenectady is concerned about inequities in these late. late. So, so, you know, that's going to be a topic. I don't know that, know that I would come up with solutions, solutions but, but I would I see that you would know that's going to be important to them. Other things to do? Oh, oh, well, this so is going, this back, going to back to the website, to the website. so we just so kind of finished, finished up, up your preparation. Um, um, at this, at website, this website, we were we very fortunate to have a, to have a superintendent, superintendent come and work with us. He actually was teaching for us for a while, and he and created, created a wonderful, a wonderful list, list about marketing, marketing yourself. yourself, and he and said he exactly what Christian was saying, that if we go in with an apologetic, oh, I didn't just do the teaching, you're, you're yeah, starting on the wrong foot. Wrong. You want to go in with in what, you, what bring. you bring. And, and you know, just you know, go listen to Christian. She said it better than I could ever do it. Do it. Um, um, this is the brochure she said to talk about. You can, you can I put the link in it. You can print it out. I think we have some copies we get from Saratoga. It's a very attractive brochure. It really highlights what the next slide is. It really highlights how adults how bring, bring so much so to the conversation. conversation. And, and I think before, I think you, before go you go on any job and you, you take it out and you mind yourself. Because, um, you know, you get there and you kind of sometimes get nervous and forget that what you're bringing is an adult professional to teach you. A couple of other things. The, these are at the link there. If you're looking for a job in New York City, they do have a Department of Education website. And I don't know if you want to move there, but you can't. You're not constrained to living, you know, just doing capital region. So there's a website, and you'll find these links on the web link I'll send to you. And this is the big... OLIS, OLIS website, website for, for a combination, a combination of OCs. And have you come, and have across, come across that, that yet, yet? Tell us. Tell us. Uh, I thought that you could use the microphone. I'm kind of thinking the process right now, so that's why I'm going to close it. Well, you want to go to this website, too. You see down at the bottom, I get the web address. They have a service where they will um, get your resume to a whole bunch of people. So, you know, you want to go back and take this into advice on beefing up your resume, but then um, you want to go down in here, and they'll be giving you more advice on um, how to actually connect to school districts. But don't, but don't limit, don't yourself. limit yourself. Go back to Kristen. You, you want the BOCES. You want calling schools. You want to stop, stop by and visit if you can. She, she really did her homework. Her homework. And, uh, and, uh, she researched, she researched it. And she got a job. Got a job. So, so it's good to it's learn, good from, to her. learn from her. Uh, just a uh, couple just more couple slides. slides. Um, um, going back, going to, back the website, to the website. There will there be, will be um, there's a page called Certification Job Info. Now, now, Lindy is going to come and speak to us next week, I hope. And at this site were some of the things that she did last year. She spoke to us, so we do have some YouTube 
case there's no problem, but um, I think you want to come. She'll talk about a lot of the certification issues. But look down at the bottom of that page because there are some important fact sheets at the bottom that you want to look up to. And finally, there is another teacher that her um, little presentation is actually at the website. You'll open it up, and it'll be pretty clear. It'll say webinar. And I did with her what I just did with Kristen. As she spoke, I kind of took notes. So this is just the beginning of my note-taking. When you open that one, give it time to open because there's a bar down at the bottom. And if you start, I, I get impatient. And I started clicking around too fast, and all you get is a big black box. You'll get the, um, you'll hear the voices, but it's a good idea to let it download completely, and then you can, um, you know, see the text as well, and that can help you remember things. So, um, that's pretty much here. That's about what I wanted to go over. Um, I'll be sending out the web link, and from there, after you and I get off this pillow, we'll both hang up. I'll get the recording, and I'll put the recording on the website as well. So you'll have both recordings, and I'll send the links out to others in the class in case they got stuck and couldn't get in, and they can listen to the two of us. So, um, do you have any questions now? And I'll uh, turn my mic off so you can talk. No, I I have questions about uh, the certification fees. So I keep them for next week because uh, I am practically already and uh, so I will follow the advice next week to do the. Perfect. And if and you want to, in the meantime, let me do this fly. Nope. Where, 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 where. Um, um, Lindy did give us some advice about this, this particular one here. She did give us advice last year. So you might even want to look at this link before. But she's going to give us the updated advice, too. So there's been a lot changing. So you could either look at some of her YouTubes from last year, but um, also come with your questions next week. And since you're the only one who actually signed on, you might be our live audience, and everyone's going to be depending on you. So anyway, I want to thank you for coming. Hello, you're the audience. I can close up the tape too and get it out to everyone else. So it's going to be you and I and Kristen. Professor, thank you very much. Uh, it was very good. I learned a lot. Especially I to work and rewrite my CV. It's very important. Yeah, I think, I think that was a really important message I got from her, too. And I want to make sure everybody everybody listens to that. But, um, we'll see what we can do. And I will save these two pieces. I think I can save the... Um, Chat board, board to in case people in case don't have time, don't have time to listen to the whole thing. Maybe they, they pick up some of her notes. Her notes. And thank you very thank much. You very and much. just and all we have to do is sign off, and, and um, we'll be okay. And I'll just turn on the recording. recording.